Modern Portfolio Theory, MPT, teaches us the importance of diversifying our investments. By careful analysis and selection, we can maximise return for a specific level of risk or minimise risk for an expected return. MPT, originally developed by Harry Markowitz in 1952, is considered so important in finance that a Nobel Prize has been awarded for his work. But is it possible this theory is all wrong? that MPT is at best a misguided set of investment principles and at worst a wealth of undermining strategy, blindly followed by tens of millions of adherents. Let's look deeper. MPT teaches investors to carefully select assets and their allocation in a portfolio. By following MPT, we seek to combine assets in such a manner as to construct a portfolio with an aggregate risk that is lower than any single investment. We can achieve our goal by carefully selecting investments with low or even negative correlation. This is easy to understand by comparing US Treasuries and the S&P 500. Typically, when money flows out of risky assets, i.e. the S&P 500, it is diverted into less risky, safer investments, i.e. Treasuries, and vice versa. In other words, the S&P 500 and the US Treasuries have a low positive or even negative correlation. Regardless of the assets under consideration, the investment decision is one of the balancing risk of return. We know the higher the risk, the higher the return. By employing techniques such as MPT, we can structure portfolios of assets that allow us to achieve certain returns with given levels of risk. If the assumptions underlying MPT hold true, that is. MPT allows us to understand the effect of diversification on our investments. Understand that this is an objective, quantifiable manner subject to specific assumptions that the investor hopes will be maintained during the whole evening. In other words, MPT helps us to diversify. The question remains that theoretically, MPT can be important, but does MPT represent the best strategy for all investors? Clearly, the assumptions underlying MPT are, in some cases, widely off base. And when you consider the utility of MPT to look into the importance of concentration risk, the opposite of diversification. This is a strategy employed by some of the wealthiest investors throughout history. Two recent examples? One, Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, currently holds some 621 million shares, priced at about $24 each, or 7% of the float, with a net worth of some $5 billion, clearly not diversifying his work for him. But the kind of concentration risk, the ultimate rebel diversification, the antithesis of MPT? Background goes to 80-year-old Warren Buffett, founder and still CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Mr Buffett owns 350k of Berkshire Hathaway's Class A shares, or over 35% of the float, at a current price of about 125k, each by Buffett's own admission of 99% of his net worth is invested in a single asset. So diversification or concentration risk, what's your pleasure?